What's good, you guys? You know who it is, man. It's your boy, Mr. Relentless Lex, and I'm back like I never left this mother. Yes, Sersky. All right. Yo, man, we got 50 Cent confronting Oprah for sabotaging Taraji P. Henson and other black actors. Now, y'all know 50 Cent do not bite his tongue at all. 50 going to say what the 50 want to say, and we're here for it. Spicy. It was the largest debut in hip-hop album. You, you're looking at it and you're saying that everything that's wrong with our culture is why I'm a success. Wow. So when I actually got a chance to talk to her, she was like, I never thought about it like that. 50 Cent says he's ready to work with Taraji P after she goes viral, where she was, you know, basically uh, uh, in tears over not being paid. 50 Cent has officially joined the chat on the controversy surrounding Taraji P. Henson and Oprah's new remake of The Color Purple, and he's publicly urging Taraji to ditch Oprah and team up with his production crew instead. You might have caught wind of Taraji revealing that she nearly walked away from The Color Purple due to low pay, and a lot of people are now saying 50 Cent tried to warn us about Oprah years ago. 50 was actually among the first public figures to call out Oprah and accuse her of sabotaging black entertainers, while pretending protecting her white predator friends like Harvey Weinstein. But Fiddy is just not one of those celebs who are all talk and no action. So when Monique revealed she was being blackballed for saying no to Oprah and Tyler Perry, Fiddy not only confronted these two, but he also hired Monique on his show. Fiddy now wants to do the same thing with Taraji, and fans are thrilled smart, because smart, we all know Taraji bro. would kill it on one of Fiddy's shows like Power or BMF. So what exactly did 50 say about this whole Taraji versus Oprah controversy? And who are the other black actors Oprah allegedly sabotaged? Let's get into it. So I just said, okay, if we can't be friends, then at least let's be enemies. So that's when he started going on her, uh, fully going at her fan base. He even named one of his dogs Oprah. It's no secret Damn. that 50 Cent can't stand Oprah. Name In fact, 50 Cent, he deliberately became Oprah's enemy after she criticized his lyrics. But this actually goes beyond just lyrics, because Fiddy later explained this situation made him realize Oprah has a pattern of throwing black entertainers under the bus, unless they suck up to her. So to give you some context, Fiddy's feud with Oprah can be traced back to the early 2000s. As Fiddy was climbing the ladder to fame, he wanted to cement his success by landing an appearance on Oprah's show. And this wasn't just about personal achievement for Fiddy. It was a chance to show his grandmother, a devoted Oprah fan, that he was doing something meaningful with his life. However, when the proposal was presented to Oprah, she turned him down and said she didn't see what Fiddy could bring to the table. Damn. Fiddy later said in an interview with The Guardian, she was completely against everything that was in my music, so she ain't never gonna have me on that show. I'm never gonna reach that platform, which is confirmation of you being a huge success. So I just said, okay, if we can't be friends, then at least let's be enemies. And as time went on and multiple other black entertainers started speaking out against Oprah, 50 Cent took his trolling to a different level by naming his dog after Oprah and his cat after Oprah's bestie, Gail King. The, oh, that's Oprah. That's Oprah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Named after the wild, Oprah, and your bro. cat's name yeah, is and then Gail. But Gail, they... okay, Gail. <laughs> when Fiddy was later asked in another interview why he has an issue with Oprah, Fiddy said Oprah is an Oreo, implying she's not so pro-black as she wants everyone to believe. But it's not just Fiddy Scent who shares the sentiment about Oprah. Ludacris has also had some strong feelings after an experience yeah. on Oprah's show left a bitter taste. Back in 2005, Ludacris and the cast from the movie Crash appeared on Oprah's show to promote the project. But instead of giving Ludacris the chance to dive into his role in the movie, Oprah turned the tables and confronted him about using the N-word in his lyrics. Ludacris felt it was a bit shady because he was invited under the pretense of promoting Crash. Bro, she did the exact same thing to Tony Braxton. Set him up an interview, had him thinking it was going to go one way for promotion, and she switched up on him, bro. She switched up on her own people. Even Luda. I didn't know about Luda. I knew about Tony, but not Luda. Boy, Oprah, you one shady sap sucker, bro. I tell you. Only to end up in an Damn. uncomfortable situation on national TV. You made about, you know, I was I was there for a Crash for the movie. Yeah, and the cast of Crash, mm -hmm. and so I didn't necessarily feel like that needed to be said. You know, mm -hmm. you didn't agree with my music, and even if you don't agree with certain songs I made, say this, you don't agree with certain songs, don't say you just don't agree with all of my right. music. Right, right. But what made this situation even worse is that Ludacris didn't take Oprah's bait, and he actually had a thoughtful and intelligent response to Oprah's question. However, Oprah decided to cut out his response, making it seem like he had nothing to say. It was like she set up this wow. whole thing just to manipulate how people saw him on her show. You know, 
she was able to say what she said and then I, I had my rebuttal and when I saw the final show her, her comments were in there yeah, it was in there but yours wasn't in there and mine weren't in there so it just looked like I kind of took it Wow. By the way, Oprah did something wow. similar to Tony Braxton. Back in 1998, yep. news broke that it. Tony had filed for bankruptcy. So Tony went on Oprah's show, hoping to get a chance to share her side of the story. But when the cameras started rolling, Oprah took a different route and went full-on interrogation mode, grilling Tony about her financial situation and basically making her feel small for not being money savvy. But Oprah took it a step further by trying to make Tony look like a spoiled rich kid. And she even joked about Tony selling her stuff on public auction. Um, I know you came from, you know, middle class parents, father's preacher and all that. And I came from middle, well, lower <laughs> middle <laughs> class. Parents. And I think when you haven't had a whole lot, mm -hmm. then the idea of being broke isn't so bothersome because you're used to being broke and it's just a state of being. But when you've had, first of all, I didn't know Gucci made silverware. Uh, <laughs> when you had Gucci silverware and baby grand pianos and you, you're used to wearing five and six and seven thousand dollar gowns yeah. at a time and spending five hundred dollars on a pair of shoes, mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's a long drop. Oh, yeah. So how, do, how does that make you feel? Um, it, it's hard to explain because my image is, is much bigger than the dollars that I was allowed. You wouldn't file a chapter seven, you would probably do a chapter 11, but I was given no other choice. I had to do a seven and came to my home and praised things and videos. So would it be like a public auction of your things, like that Gucci flatware? <laughs> Probably. This interview reflected very negatively on Tony, and she later called out Oprah for acting holier than thou. She was so freaking mean to me. I couldn't believe it because I loved her so much. I admired her and looked up to her. And she pretty much reprimanded me. She says to me, I hear you have Gucci flatware. I'm a Winfrey and I don't have Gucci flatware. You ain't got Gucci flatware because you didn't want to buy it. It's not because you couldn't afford it. What do you mean? And immediately, she made me feel this big. After Oprah's interview with Tony resurfaced, Monique took to Instagram to say Oprah has a pattern of demeaning both black men and women. If you think Oprah only demeans black men, it's because the black woman has been made virtually invisible, Monique wrote. See for yourself with our sister Tony B. And then Monique also called out Oprah for exploiting Michael Jackson and his family. Back in 1993, MJ invited Oprah for an exclusive sit-down at Neverland, and that interview was a game-changer for Oprah, making him a global sensation beyond the U.S. borders. But they Things took a turn after Michael passed away, and Oprah jumped on the hype train around the controversial HBO documentary, Leaving Neverland. She recorded a special featuring Michael's accusers, Wade Robson and James Safechuck, ignoring the fact that both of them had previously sworn under oath that MJ never harmed them. This prompted Monique to again call out Oprah, saying, Here's a man that was found not guilty in the eyes of the law, and you wait for 10 years after this man was deceased to Ten now do an interview years, with people bro. who said they lied? Oprah later defended herself against the uproar, saying she was just shedding light on the pattern of essay in Hollywood. But as a lot of people pointed out, Oprah never went the same route when it came to her longtime friend, Harvey Weinstein. If she wanted to expose the pattern of essay in Hollywood, why not do a special exposing Weinstein's pattern? Even some celebs called out Oprah over this, including actress Rose McGowan, who wrote on Twitter, I am glad more are seeing the ugly truth of Oprah. I wish she were real, but she isn't. From being pals with Weinstein to abandoning and destroying Russell Simmons' victims, she is about supporting a sick power structure for personal gain. She is as fake as they come. Hashtag lizard. And while Dang, Oprah tried lizard. hard to restore her reputation after Harvey Weinstein was convicted, it seems like she just can't move away from all those allegations about throwing black entertainers under the bus. And this latest situation with Taraji and the color purple reignited the same conversation, prompting 50 Cent to chime in and say, enough is enough. Following Taraji's bombshell revelation about having to practically beg for fair pay on the color purple, 50 stepped in with a supportive message for Taraji and offered her to work with his production company instead. 50 Cent hopped on Instagram to say, they dropped the ball. F him, Taraji. I'm ready to work. Let's get it. GLG, Green Light Gang, G Unit Film and TV. By the way, this isn't the first time Fiddy is showing support to black actors who felt let down by Oprah. After Monique openly accused Oprah and Tyler Perry for blacklisting her, Fiddy confronted Tyler Perry about Monique's allegations. However, Fiddy said that Tyler acted like he had no clue about Monique's career struggles and tried to distance himself from the situation. Like, Monique, why is she canceled? Mm hmm. Gotcha. I had to revisit that because it was like, it didn't make sense to me, babe. I'm like, so what did she do? She said something you didn't like? like so she didn't work for 13 years after that? Right. And then I, I know Tyler wouldn't support that. 
He never told anybody, nobody not to work with him. Tyler but, Perry? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I talked to him, he was like, no, nah, I, I never told no one not to work with him. And I said, but you Tyler Perry and you never told anyone to work, work with him. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, I never looked at it like that. Because I said, you, right. you just got to consider how, like, how strong your influence is at that point. Because... It hasn't happened. But 50 Cent didn't stop with just words. He backed up his support by taking action and cast Monique in the second season of Black Mafia Family, a TV show produced by his G-Unit Films and Television. Fans are now giving major kudos to Fiddy for walking the talk and doing what many consider to be the right thing, especially since most celebs seem to be scared of saying anything negative about Oprah. One fan said, Wow, I had no idea Fiddy did all of this. Much love to Fiddy for all he is doing and has done. And another person added, Fiddy Cent seems like one of the real authentic celebrities on Hollyweird. He and Cat Williams and maybe Kanye. Fiddy Cent stays coming for them in Hollyweird. But let us know how you feel about all this. Was Fiddy Cent right about Oprah this whole time? And would you like to see Taraji in one of Fiddy's shows? Comment down below and then check out. Bro, I will say this right here, bro. Fiddy is one smart entrepreneur, black man, successful. The fact that he's standing up for Taraji, man, that's that's fire. And Monique and Cat is on the same page with Fiddy. Bro, when Fiddy lock in and Fiddy locks in Cat, Taraji, and Monique. And probably some more that's going to come out because of the shady stuff that's going on inside Hollywood. Bro, he's going to be the next big. He already big in, in a celebrity status, but this is going to be major for him, for everybody. Everybody's going to eat. The fans is going to love it. You see the texts and the tweets and everybody loving. People saying, I can't believe 50 have stood up. And he's actually doing the work behind his voice and what he stands for, man. So shout out to 50, middle finger to Oprah. You did.